Go ahead. Daniel 2, 32 through 33. I wouldn't stay this long if it wasn't. The head of that statue was made of fine gold. I'm going to show you the statue. Its breast and its arms of silver, its belly and its thighs of bronze and its legs of iron, its feet partly of iron and partly of clay. So the gold and then the silver. The silver is the Medes and the Persians. And this is Cyrus. And so the wealth is sent back with Israel to rebuild the temple. Ezra 1 uh, what happens is Cyrus, said, uh, the king of Persia, says, The Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he has appointed me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. And he sends the people. And he says, To Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and rebuild the house of the Lord, the God of Israel. He is the God who is in Jerusalem. Every survivor at whatever place he may live, let the men of that place support him with silver and gold, with goods and cattle, together with a free will offering for the house of God, which is in Jerusalem. You see the patterns repeating over and over. Go ahead. Cyrus sends them with bulging wealth. Ezra 1, 6 through 11. Also, King Cyrus brought out the articles of the house of the Lord, which Nebuchadnezzar had carried away from Jerusalem and put in the house of his gods. And Cyrus, king of Persia, had them brought out by the hand of Mithrith, the treasure, and then he counted them out to Sheshbazar, the prince of Judah, and he sent them. Okay? And so all this stuff was their number and all that. And he went, they went up from Babylon to Jerusalem. Okay. Go ahead. So God sends them back to rebuild it, but they encounter trouble, affliction, persecution. This guy named Rahum, he sends a letter to try to stop them. The devil's attempt, he's always going to try to stop the government of God. You better listen, I'm telling you. The devil is going to try to stop what's going to be built. In Ezra 4, 11 through 16, this is a letter to King Xerxes that Rahum says, Your servants, the men in the region beyond the river, and now let it be known to the king that the Jews who came up from you have come to us at Jerusalem. So now these usurpers are in Jerusalem. And they're rebuilding the rebellious and evil city and are finishing the walls. And that's in Nehemiah. And repairing the foundations. Nehemiah couldn't even build the wall because he had to fight the people and build the wall at the same time. Now let it be known to the king that if the city is rebuilt and the walls are finished... They will not pay tribute, custom or toll, and it will damage the revenue of the kings. See, this is the devil. He does not want them to rebuild this city. Jerusalem. Yep. And, and the temple is going to be rebuilt. So now because we're in the service of the palace and it's not fitting for us to see the king's dishonor. See how that just kissy kissy up to him? Therefore we have sent and informed the king so that a search may be made in the record books of your fathers. Okay? So please, please give us something and let, make them stop building this, this city. Go ahead. And you will discover in the record books and learn that the city is a rebellious city and damaging to the kings and provinces. And that, that, yeah, I bet so, to the devil's kingdom. And that they have incited revolt within it the past days. Therefore, that city was laid waste. We inform the king that if the city is rebuilt and the walls are finished... As a result, you will have no possession in the province beyond that river. Why is that? Because when the government of God comes, <laughs> it takes over. All earthly kings are going to be humbled as God's kingdom is established and exalted. Go ahead. The king's reply, that rebellion and re revolt have been perpetrated in it, that mighty kings have ruled over Jerusalem, uh, governing all the process beyond the river, and that tribute, cu uh, custom, and toll were paid to them. So now issue a decree to make these men stop. Stop working that this city may not be rebuilt until a decree is issued by me. This is where it's getting good, y'all, I'm telling you. They went in haste to Jerusalem to the Jews and stopped them by force of arms. Then work on the house of God in Jerusalem ceased, and it was stopped until the second year of the reign of Darius, king of Persia. Whenever people try to build, when I got this place, it was hard. I'm telling you, it's always going to be hard to build anything in the kingdom of God because the devil comes against you left and right. But are you going to stop building? Go ahead. Okay, so Zechariah 4. This is the good stuff, y'all. Zechariah 4, the two olive trees and the lampstand. This is a weird, weird chapter, but I'll explain it to you right here. 
In Zechariah 4, it's got one of the famous quotes. It's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit. Now, where does it come in? Says the Lord of hosts. It says, what are you, O great mountain, that has stopped my building progress? Before Zerubbabel, you will become a plain, and he will bring forth the top stone with shouts of grace, grace to it. So the two olive trees and are the king's, and the priests separated. They're not the king priest. It's the king and the priest separated. That's the two olive trees. The lampstand is how the world of darkness is going to be lit up with the glory of God. How many continents are there? Seven continents. How many spirits of God? Seven. Seven spirits of God are going to light up seven continents. So they're going to minister to them. The people will come just as they did Solomon. When Solomon built his temple, everybody came to see the temple of God. And he tried to convert them. Zechariah 6, 11 through 15. So this is what's interesting. Watch this. Take silver and gold and make an ornate crown and set it on the head of Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest. Huh. Huh. Not the king? No, the high priest. No, no, no. No, we're still talking about Melchizedek. Whenever you see king priest, it's just that the priest has been crowned king. Not the king who is given the priest. The priest has been crowned king. The priest is the hardest thing, guys. That's where you lay your life down. When you lay your life down, you are resurrected, and you are crowned. Woo, this is good. Joshua is the priest. He's crowned. He's king priest. He's a Christ. Then say to them, thus says, now this is awesome. Thus says the Lord of hosts, behold, a man whose name is Branch. That's not just Jesus. That's the Christ's, the ones who are the king priest. The ones who have that priestly king Melchizedek anointing. For he will branch out from where he is and he will build the temple of the Lord. Yes, it is he who will build the temple of the Lord and he who will build the honor and sit and rule on his throne. Thus he will be a priest on his throne. And the council of peace will be between the two offices of the king priest. Okay? And if you watch what it says here. This is so important because people start this son of man process and they think, I'm going to do it, but then the next day they don't. They don't do what God tells them to do. And guys, I'm telling you, I, I'm, I don't consider myself a very smart person. I really don't. It's just that I got my hand burned so many times when I put my hand on that stove that I said, okay, God, I'm going to be completely obedient to you no matter what you say. But if you start this son of man process and you do what he says and then you shrink back and then you do what he says, it doesn't work, guys. It won't happen. So that's why it says in verse 15, it says, Then you will know if you do this, if you crown the, the priest king and set up the king priest, the government, then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you and it will take place if you kind of obey the Lord your God. Completely. Completely obey the Lord your God. Okay. So God makes his sons. They are forged out of priests willing to lay down their lives for his other people that can't or won't for whatever reason. These are his beloved. Jesus pierced the veil to bring these other sons through to the right hand with truth, judgment, law. This is not an assumed position. You have to go through the Son of Man process. This is a process where the Father crushes you. He loves you so much, He crushes you. You will be tested because your identity, His name is at stake. And become a tola, which is a worm despised, forsaken, nothing, die to self, leave the matrix. You don't have anything in this world. Nothing. The more you build here, the more you're going to lose because you've got to leave it all behind to go and get what's 
God wants to give you. Then, when you leave, when you die to self, and the time is right, the sun will rise with healing in its wings, and you will be resurrected, and the enemy cannot touch you anymore. Isaiah 53, who has believed our message, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a tender shoot, and like a root out of parched ground. He has no stately form or majesty that we should look upon him. These guys, these Melchizedek's priests, there's nothing about them that you would go, oh, nor appearance that we should be attracted to him. I don't have any friends. <laughs> he was despised because I tell them all how it is. <laughs> he was despised and forsaken of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and like one from whom men hide their face. He was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely our griefs he himself bore, and our sorrows he carried. Yet we ourselves esteemed him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was pierced through for our transgressions, and he was crushed for our iniquities. The chastising for our well-being fell upon him, and by his scourging we are healed. All of us like sheep have gone astray. Each of us have turned his own way. But the Lord has caused the iniquity of us all to fall on him. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that's led to the slaughter and like a sheep that's silent before the shears, he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. And as for his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of the land of the living... For the transgression of my people to whom the stroke was due. His grave was a sign with wicked men, yet he was a rich man in his death. Because he had done no violence, nor was there any deceit in his mouth, but the Lord was pleased to crush him. Who crushed him? Putting him to grief. If he would render himself as a guilt offering, he will see his offspring. He will prolong his days, and the good pleasure of the Lord will prosper in his hand as a result of the anguish of his soul. He will see it and be satisfied. By his knowledge, the righteous one, my servant, will justify the many as he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will allot him a portion with the great, and he will divide the booty. See, suffer, and then I will allot. You don't just get it suffer and he will divide the booty with the strong because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors yet he himself bore the sin of many and interceded for the transgressors so now we're in Ezra 5 the prophets come so remember they stopped building because the devil uh, through those guys got them to stop building because the king said stop so the prophets come with all this anointing with all the word of the Lord and with the king priest and the king priest, okay? The prophets come and Zerubbabel and Joshua begin to build the temple anyways. Even though they said stop building. So the enemy comes and tries to stop them and they did not stop this time. This guy named Tatanay sends a letter to Darius. We tried to tell them to stop and ask for names and this is what they said. Ezra 5.11 We are the servants of the God of heaven and earth. Melchizedek anointing. And are rebuilding the temple that was built many years ago with a great king of Israel built and finished. So God told them to go. He raised up Cyrus, sent them back from captivity. They stopped because of persecution. Whose land is this? Where are they? Israel, Jerusalem, Mount Hebron. That's where the glory is, right? Who can be against you when God is for you? Mm. So they started building this thing, even though the earthly king said stop. And what happened was, go ahead, the temple was built. Haggai 2, 3-9, three, three, who is left among you who saw this temple in its former glory? So in other words, there were people that were there that saw Solomon's temple, okay? And he says, how do you see it now? Does it not seem to you like nothing in comparison? But now take courage, Zerubbabel. So in other words, this temple wasn't awesome like Solomon's. It wasn't like that. But watch this. Take courage also, Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and all of you people 
of the land. Take courage, declares the Lord, and work, for I am with you. Does it say, sit there and I'll come and get you? It says, work, for I am with you. Keep pushing. Get up every day. Put your hand to that plow. Say, devil, you're coming out, declares the Lord of hosts. As for the promise which I made you when you came out of Egypt, my spirit is abiding in your midst. Do not fear, for thus says the Lord of hosts, once more, in a little while, I'm going to shake the heavens and the earth, the sea, also the dry land. I will shake all the nations, and they will come with the what? Wealth of the nations. And I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, the gold is mine, declares the Lord of hosts. The latter glory of this house will be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give peace, declares the Lord of hosts. So that temple was rebuilt by Herod later on. It, it went through time, and then Herod rebuilt on top of that temple. That was the temple in Jesus' time, and it was destroyed in 70 A.D., just as Jesus prophesied it was going to be. In Matthew 24, Jesus came out from the temple and was going away when his disciples came to a point of the temple, uh, pointing the temple buildings to him. And he said to them, Do you not see all these things? Truly I say to you, not one stone here will be left upon another which will not be torn down. So, but not before the wealth was taken to Rome. And Rome turned into Constantinople, Constantinople, which is where the Catholic Church is. And the Catholic Church employed some guys called the Knights Templar, and the Knights Templar started plundering all underneath the temple and everywhere that they had wealth that they knew of, and they got it all. Babylon is where the money is. The religious system still in operation today, and it's very possible that money is actually under Babylon, where they're rebuilding Babylon. If you get on the internet, you can actually see where um, Saddam Hussein was building Babylon. Yeah, well, it's, well there's going to be a whole lot more. But the point is that they believe that a lot of the money was still there to do it, but that was God's money. But the religious system now, listen to me, the religious system, which is a spiritual Babylon, is still in operation today that takes God's money's money and enslaves them. And that's church. Go ahead. But the real glory didn't go there. Isaiah 23, 17 through 24. And it shall come to pass after the end of 70 years that the Lord will visit Tyre. And she shall turn to her house and shall commit fornication with all the kingdoms of the world upon the face of the earth, all the kingdoms of the earth. So in her merchandise and her hire shall be holiness to the Lord. It shall not be treasured nor laid up. For her merchandise shall be for them that dwell before the Lord to eat sufficiently and for durable clothing. So it's coming back to me and my sons. You are not getting it, devil. Isaiah 45. Thus says the Lord to Cyrus, his anointed, whom I have taken by the right hand, to subdue nations before him and to loose the loins of kings, to open doors before him so that the gates will not be shut. How would you like to have gates that are not shut, that the wealth of the nations come in day and night? I will go before you and make the rough places smooth. I will shatter the doors of bronze and cut through their iron bars. I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden wealth in secret places. Mm. Haggai 2, 5 through 9. Charlie, you better get back in here. For thus says the Lord of hosts, Once more, in a little while, I'm going to shake the heavens and the earth, the sea also in the dry land. This is awesome, y'all, I'm telling you. I'm going to shake the nations, and they will come with the wealth of all the nations, and I will fill this house with glory. The silver is mine, the gold is mine, the latter glory of this house will be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, declares the Lord of hosts. You're fixing to miss the good part. Isaiah 2. The word which, is, which Isaiah the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. So when you see Judah and Jerusalem, that's the Melchizedek blessing, right? 
Now it will come about in the last days the mountain of the house of the Lord will be established as the chief of the mountains and will be raised above the hills and all the nations will stream to it. And many peoples will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us concerning his way and that we will walk in his paths. For the law will go forth from Zion and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he, will be, and he will judge between the nations and will render decisions for many people. See, this is all about judgment. You will be righteous during this time period. This is when the millennium. And they will hammer their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. And nation will not lift up sword against nation. And never again will they learn war. Isaiah 9, 1 through 3. But there will be no more gloom for her who was in anguish. In early times he treated the land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali with contempt. But later on he shall make it glorious. Now this is the prophecy that Jesus, when he went into his ministry, this is the one that was spoken, that they brought back up. By the way of the sea on the other side of Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. This is a pattern that's repeating, okay? The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. Those who live in a dark land, the light will shine on them. You shall multiply the nation. You shall increase their gladness. They will be glad in your presence as with the gladness of harvest. And as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For you shall break the yoke of their burden and the staff on their shoulders. The rod of their oppressor is as at the battle of Midian. Go ahead. Isaiah 9, 6 through 7. See, this isn't just about Jesus. Now you understand this is about the sons. For a child will be born to us. A son will be given to us. And the government will rest on his shoulders. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. There will be no end to the increase of his government or of peace. On the throne of David over his kingdom to establish and to uphold it with justice and righteousness. From then on and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this. I was talking, I was talking to Charlie. I was just going to say, I was talking to Charlie um, just a couple of days ago, and I was trying to explain all this. What God has shown me is that I'm telling you when I tell you I'm serious. <laughs> Tonight, I really believe this is going to start to move. I really believe that the kingdom of God is about to be established on the earth. Uh, I'm serious because I can see everything in a straight line. And I said, God, what is that straight line? He says, baby, that's your DNA. I mean, when I talk to you, I can preach all this stuff without the slides. You know that. Because I can, I can take every, every one of these slides and I can preach an hour on these slides. Because this, this line that goes through the Bible for me, everything attaches to it. And it's my DNA. That's how I can tell you the word without even looking at the Bible. What I'm telling you is the line is very clear now. And what I'm telling you is I believe tribulation starts. So I, I was kind of puzzled. I was like, well, God, how in the world does tribulation start and we're protected? You know, because you're one. You're one with God. And while the kingdom of this world is being torn down, we're going to be building his kingdom. But the people that are going to go through tribulation, see, we won't let them come over there where we are, if you're Christ. You won't let them because they have to go through the fire. They have to be tested. They have to be tried. That's how it works. I know that's harsh, but that's how it works. You do not consider equality a thing to be grasped. You have to go through the process in order to be a Christ. Revelation 1, 4 through 7. John to the seven churches that are in Asia. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, firstborn, and the rulers of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and released us from our sins by his blood. So this is from Jesus. And hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Not king priest. These are Christ only. 
To him be the glory and the dominion forever. Amen. Behold, he is coming with the clouds. Now this is the Christ. And every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. This is not Jesus coming in the clouds. This is the clouds, the Nephilim. This is what's been developing inside of us. We're going to be coming with that rainbow. The rainbow is the five-fold ministry. We've talked about this. And every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. All the For thus says the Lord of hosts, Once more, in a little while, I'm going to shake the heavens and the earth, the sea also in the dry land. This is awesome, y'all. I'm telling you. I'm going to shake the nations, and they will come with the wealth of all the nations, and I will fill this house with glory. The silver is mine, the gold is mine, the latter glory of this house will be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, declares the Lord of hosts. You're fixing to miss the good part. Isaiah 2. The word which, is, which Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. So when you see Judah and Jerusalem, that's the Melchizedek blessing, right? Now it will come about in the last days, the mountain of the house of the Lord will be established as the chief of the mountains and will be raised above the hills and all the nations will stream to it. And many peoples will come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob that he may teach us concerning his way, and that we will walk in his paths. For the law will go forth from Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem, and he, will be, and he will judge between the nations, and will render decisions for many people. See, this is all about judgment. You will be righteous during this time period. This is when the millennium. And they will hammer their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks, and nation will not lift up sword against nation, and never again will they learn war. Isaiah 9, 1 through 3. But there will be no more gloom for her who was in anguish. In early times he treated the land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali with contempt. But later on he shall make it glorious. Now this is the prophecy that Jesus, when he went into his ministry, this is the one that was spoken, that they brought back up. By the way of the sea on the other side of Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. This is a pattern that's repeating, okay? The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. Those who live in a dark land, the light will shine on them. You shall multiply the nation. You shall increase their gladness. They will be glad in your presence as with the gladness of harvest. And as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For you shall break the yoke of their burden and the staff on their shoulders. The rod of their oppressor is as at the battle of Midian. Go ahead. Isaiah 9, 6 through 7. See, this isn't just about Jesus. Now you understand this is about the sons. For a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace, there will be no end to the increase of his government or of peace. On the throne of David, over his kingdom, to establish and to uphold it with justice and righteousness, from then on and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this. I was talking, I was talking to Charlie, I was just going to say, I was talking to Charlie um, just a couple of days ago, and I was trying to explain all this. What God has shown me is that I'm telling you when I tell you I'm serious. <laughs> Tonight, I really believe this is going to start to move. I really believe that the kingdom of God is about to be established on the earth. Uh, I'm serious because I can see everything in a straight line. And I said, God, what is that straight line? He says, baby, that's your DNA. I mean, when I talk to you, I can preach all this stuff without the slides. You know that. Because I can, I can take every, every one of these slides and I can preach an hour on these slides. Because this, this line that goes through the Bible for me, everything attaches to it, and it's my DNA. That's how I can tell you the word without even looking at the Bible. What I'm telling you is the line is very clear now. And what I'm telling you is I believe tribulation starts. So I, I was kind of puzzled. I was like, well, God, how in the world does tribulation start and we're protected? You know, because you're one. You're one with God. And while the kingdom of this world is being torn down, 
we're going to be building his kingdom. But the people that are going to go through tribulation, see, we won't let them come over there where we are, if you're Christ. You won't let them because they have to go through the fire. They have to be tested. They have to be tried. That's how it works. I know that's harsh, but that's how it works. You do not consider equality a thing to be grasped. You have to go through the process in order to be a Christ. Okay. Revelation 1, 4 through 7. John to the seven churches that are in Asia. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, firstborn, and the rulers of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and released us from our sins by his blood. So this is from Jesus. And hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Not king priest. These are Christ only. To him be the glory and the dominion forever. Amen. Behold, he is coming with the clouds. Now this is the Christ. And every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. This is not Jesus coming in the clouds. This is the clouds, the Nephilim. This is what's been developing inside of us. We're going to be coming with that rainbow. The rainbow is the five-fold ministry. We've talked about this. And every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. All the people who stepped on us and said, Who are you? Get out of my face. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn over him. So it is to be. Amen. This is about the Christ, the crowned priest. Go ahead. F uh, Revelation 5, 9 through 10. Worthy are you to take the book and to break its seals, for you were slain and purchased for God with your blood. Men from every tribe and tongue and people and nation, you have made them to be a kingdom and priests to our God, and they will reign upon the earth. It's about all who are going to take on the Son of Man journey out of the matrix. They go to heaven, they take on this journey right here. They take this journey, and when they go out here, they get the glory, and they bring it back on their shoulders. And that's why he trusts us. And we begin to bear fruit. That fulfills the prophetic blessing. I'm almost done. Go ahead. Here's the million dollar question. Ready? Can he trust you with his kingdom? Because Ezekiel 28, 16 through 17, by the abundance of your trade, you were internally filled with violence and you sinned. The abundance of your trade, the government, the glory, the kingdoms, the weightiness, the power. He was in charge of it all. The word internally is the word tavek, and that is the center, which is your heart, your universe, our universe. And it says you were internally filled with violence. That word violence is shamak, and it means unjust gain. He was oppressor. He brought no justice to the people. And you sin, the word shata, and it means to forfeit. You forfeited your inheritance. You led others astray, and you bear the blame because you've done harm to those people. That's why he says you were a murderer from the beginning. Therefore I have cast you as profane. Profane is shalal, to break one's word, to take back the inheritance. You prostituted. You said you loved me only to get my hand, only to get my wealth and my power. But you didn't love me. From the mountain of God, the high places, your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom by reason of your splendor. Guys, Lucifer fell because he liked money, he liked power, and he liked control. He liked to enslave others. He didn't have the concept that others could be brought up to where he was. He oppressed them. He didn't bring justice to victims. He wanted his inheritance. And he gave his love only to take and deceive. David, this is, this is going to break my heart. I might even cry. David was a man after God's own heart. And he saw Bathsheba. And she belonged to another man. And he laid with her, and he got her pregnant. And he tried to cover it up by killing her husband. And he thought everything was okay. 
And then this guy, this prophet, his name was Nathan. He comes to David. And he says to him, he says, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said to David, the Lord, that's great that you've repented. Because if you wouldn't repent, you're probably going to die. Even David, okay? But Nathan says to David, the Lord also has taken away your sin because you repented. You shall not die. However, because by this deed you have given occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme him. I heard the conversation in my own head. I, I heard what happened. David loved the Father. He was a Melchizedek priest. He loved the Father. He was a man after God's own heart. And I saw him. I saw him fall. I saw him do all this, try to cover up. I was there. I've done it before myself. And I heard the devil come to God and say, a man after God's own heart. He doesn't love you. Nobody loves you. You're just a mean ogre. And he said worse. Because David was so close to the Lord and he fell away, the Lord's enemies had a right to blaspheme God. Do you hear what I'm saying? You can be, it's, it's no big deal if a friend betrays you that's way out here. No big deal if somebody goes around talking about you. Well, I'm not friends with them anymore. But if your sister, if your brother, somebody who's close to you, who loves you, who would do anything for you, if they betray you, that hurts. And don't think it didn't hurt God. And that's what all this is about. Can God, your Father, trust you with this? Will you betray him? Are you a bastard? Or are you a real son? Are you one that just wants to get everything but not go through the tests and not go through the trials? It happened to Lucifer, who was just like Jesus, guys. And it can happen again. Psalm 139, 23 through 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxious thoughts. This is why. Because you don't know your own heart. You say, oh, I'm good. And then you go over here and lay with a woman and have her husband killed. And see if there be any hurtful way in me. And lead me into everlasting way. Do you really want him? Or you just want what he can give you? Because guys, I'm going to tell you right now. He is the real treasure. I get the stuff. But he is the real treasure. Fellowshipping with him. Being one with him. He loves you so much. Do you really love him? Do you love him enough to lay your precious life down? Enough to walk away from a finite world of things. Things that have momentary glitter, but no weightiness, no everlasting riches. Ever since Cain, the religious have not wanted to offer the sacrifice of their life. They always want a mediator so they don't have to stand before the face of God themselves. Evil people in the Bible demonstrate the evil character of Satan. Every one of the characteristics. And the righteous people demonstrate the Father's heart and his ways. And he wants to be with us. And how he, he wants within us. But Abel understood that life was required. Life was required. And Cain offered what he thought was good enough, but it wasn't life. There was no life in his fruit that he gave to God. 
Man trying to please God is religion versus man being obedient. Obedient to the death of a cross. Obedient to the death of self. And that is how you become a real son. That's the last one, isn't it? Do you understand what God wants to give his real sons? I'm sorry, I was going to cut it up in pieces, but if I would have, I'd have lost you after a whole week. Do you understand the glory that was on this earth and what's getting ready to come again in our world tangible, touchable, we've talked about it, we've seen it, we've thought about it, we've meditated on it. It's coming, guys. I'm telling you it's coming. But can he trust you with it? That's the question. I want you to search your heart right now. You think. You think that you can handle it. I've been on my face all week. I really have. You can ask my kids. I've been crying. I, I just can't fathom this. I'm asking him, am I? Because, I mean, even after I'm a king priest, the devil was a king priest. He fell. Am I able to handle this, Lord? Will the deceitfulness of riches, the desire for other things, and the cares of this world, will they overcome me? Thanks, Mike. I appreciate that vote of confidence. I don't think so. I love him so much. I, I really have searched my heart. I really don't think it will. Because I, I, I don't see it. But, but again, I still am on my face. God, will I give your enemies reason to blaspheme you when I'm building your kingdom? I want you to think about that this week. And if you're not already on that process, it is so worth it. It is so worth that process so that God can trust you with his wealth. So, Father, I just come right now. I thank you for this message. I mean, it flat proves that you're not a son unless you are wrought in Christ. And I pray for all the people, Lord, that the veils would come off. That their fear, they would see it, Lord, that they would see their fear. So that they can overcome it. And they can hear the truth. That they do not just get it assumed. Just because Jesus did it for them. And Jesus stands as a mediator between them and God. No, you got to stand before God yourself. And he is a holy, terrible God. A consuming fire. And you better respect and fear him. If you lose that, woe to you. Thank you, Father.